Shy L and Brian Bravo are upcoming artists that struggle with confidence, working side jobs, and chasing their dreams. With each new song they create, they meet characters that help them develop, gradually find confidence in themselves, and eventually end up on a high note with a platinum record. Ladies and gentlemen, the masterminds. Where is this guy, man? Yo. Hey, yo. Where you at, man? I I'm on my way. Yeah, I, I know we're late. I'm gonna be there in like in a few seconds. Like a minute, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay, man. Hey, yo, Linda. Okay. Come listen to my tunes, girl. A ver. I wanna be a rock star. Veremos. I ain't mean to be alone. Shakira, you put me out of my zone. I pray to Dios, girl, you got to you two met at a talent show. Can you tell me more about how the dream duo started making music together? Yeah, we met at a talent show called The Night of Hope. It was through the Canadian Mental Health Association in 2014. I performed a spoken word piece. Brian performed a hip hop piece, but back then we actually didn't hang out together and make music together. There was actually a few years gap in between until I was reintroduced to Brian through another friend. And then at that point, we just started doing a lot of uh, freestyling and writing mm -hmm. on separate occasions, yeah. but we were always in the same room. Um, from then we joined a group called the Mindful MCs, mm -hmm. which we kind of, uh, worked on performances and then from there it branched out to us just being a duo now you guys are yeah. coming out with an album uh you're releasing song by song uh and it's all going together what inspired this album it's called confianza confianza yeah right? confianza which confianza. is a confidence in english yes um is it spanish it yeah it has a mix of spanglish so spanish and english um, as my background roots are Ecuadorian. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been adopted by the Latino community. My yeah. dad is Jamaican, my mom's from Finland. I've been hanging out with Brian, his cousins, and there's a lot of like Latino people in this area too. I've been hanging out here the last few years and picking up some Spanish. So tell me more about this album. So it's got uh, sp Splanlish? Spanglish, uh, yeah. Sp yes. Spanglish. <laughs> Yeah. Um, tell, tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, so um, the idea kind of basically starts off as us kind of working our way as first kind of being nervous, um, how to get introduced into this music, where we start slowly start building our confidence throughout the songs, um, which kind of introduces the idea of us eventually making it to the end, which uh, we kind of eventually come confident with ourselves, we win a platinum. And that is the goal. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I hope that happens for you guys. Um, so do the music videos reflect that? Because I know that you've come out with a music video for Linda, for example. Um, yeah. are, are all the music videos going to have common elements that kind of fit together? Yes. Yes, yes. we have uh, right now our themes are kind of uh, of the party issue. If you want to say a little bit more. About well, we really don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to make fun of ourselves. Yeah. Life is short, so we keep our stuff um, like humorous and lighthearted. Um, and I think it goes with the whole idea of like being struggling artists on this path who've dealt with like mental health issues. Like this life can be really heavy and um, overwhelming. So we like to keep things light as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, all these videos are gonna be shot by the same guy because we really click with Manolo um, at Shot by Third Eye. He's really on the same pages us and we even had an Easter egg in our next video that's coming out on Friday that relates to our first video. So yeah, they're all going to be connected in different ways. Yeah. Now, are you playing yourselves? Because I know you're featured in all of the videos, well, at least the ones that I've seen. Um, are you yeah. going to be featured in all of the videos and are you playing yourself or a version of yourself? Uh, we, we're, we play kind of like ourselves, but at the same time, we take it very comedic. So it is a version of ourselves. Um, we are planning on being in every video, uh, at least for this project we are. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you mentioned that this touches on mental health. Uh, what exactly, in regards to mental health, are you are you really touching on uh, anything specific or just in general? I think it's this actually is more in general. Like our last group, we were in the mindful MCs. That was much more specific. Like we had a song called depression. We had a song called mentally healthy. This is more like we're struggling artists. We deal with you know anxiety, depression, all these doubts that we can achieve our dreams and. The songs just kind of um, track our journey of how we, we overcome those mental health issues and doubts and that kind of thing with um, really like joyfulness and uh, joyfulness, dance, dancing, like yeah, yeah. Like, it's like a therapeutic dancing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Were there any artists who you pulled from when creating this uh, album? Orishas. Orishas, yeah, Orishas yeah. one. Um, we had. The Bad Bunny inspiration too. Mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, you listen to Joyner Lucas. Yeah. 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 I don't. Know. This is a really unique project though. So far, like I can't think of anybody's sound that it it sounds a lot like. It's. I'd say they're more like minor influences as opposed to like because yeah, there's a group called Orishas that um, we were told by our director has a similar sound to us, but we don't listen to them. We never even like we check some of it out afterwards. So we're really um doing our own thing um, so far, creating our own sound mostly. But yeah, those are all like artists that we look up to that he mentioned. What do you hope to achieve with your music? I guess a lot of just joy and for us, it's kind of like our therapy really. It's like when something's on our mind and we just want to express it, this is our way of expression of how to get what we want to say out there in a, either a positive and um, good space, headspace. We work with a producer called uh, D Menace Music who really um, guides us on how to take the direction sometimes and sometimes we just bring him a project and it's honestly such a great feeling. It's like so relieving sometimes just to get on that microphone and to get exactly yeah. what you're thinking out there. For sure and for me like a huge dream of mine has to go on has been to go on tour. So I'm really hoping that this project can lead to a tour in South America. We're getting more of our music shared over there and more, yeah. more connected in the Latino community here. So that'd be amazing to uh, go on tour over there and re really live the music dream like at the highest level. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What has been your feedback that you've received about your, your songs that you've released and songs in the past? Uh, you wanna come play Uncle actually? Sure, I was going to say, you could go for it, because you're always showing me these messages of all these, these positive things people say. Yeah, sure, I can start this, though. Uh, my uncle is a Grammy, actually multiple Grammy award-winning artist, and he's been giving very positive feedback. He just said the other day, like, the second I turn on one of your guys' songs, I know it's you right away. He's like, it doesn't, remi it doesn't remind me of anything else. And he said, that's a good thing. And my dad's also very accomplished. He's given really positive. I mean, the feedback, it means a lot from everybody, but when we get feedback from people who I'm are really like at that careful. level, like we're like, thank you. Like, I yeah. really appreciate that. We had um, like, like my mom, for example, she's one of my biggest like influences. She like comes, she's always listening to my dad too. So I remember when we first, actually I'll, I'll share this story. When I first um, played a, a Spanish song for my dad that we did together called Bandida, he sent me a video where he was like in tears and he was so proud and he just stared like, mm, I love this. Huh. This is this is beautiful. And he is like drinking wine. He has some tears in his eyes. But um, it was it was a really beautiful moment. But at the same time, yeah, like the feedback and the way that everyone just expresses themselves. It's been overwhelmingly positive. I think we only yeah. have two dislikes on our wow. in the video. I don't even know if anybody's given us negative feedback in person. In person, like it's been, I it's been over. Yeah, it's been I a guess that means we're not famous enough yet. We haven't yeah. got the haters yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's super catchy, and of course, you guys are getting so many compliments. Um, it, it's definitely like something you can dance to. All of your songs are very like upbeat and positive, uh, especially during a time where you know uh, it, it's a little bit of a negative environment uh, with COVID nineteen. People need something to lift their spirits, and I feel like your music does exactly that. It's so positive, so uplifting. 
Um, can you tell me uh, some of the ideas behind each music video that you've released so far? And maybe an upcoming one. Well, I'm just gonna follow up with uh, what you were saying is, that was uh, one of the inspirations too that we we're kind of going in this direction was because of the whole uh, pandemic. Well, we, we, we live fairly close to each other. So we're always working in my in my back of my garage, but um, which is our studio. And um, it's, it's really influenced us to like create a positive sound too kind of work around and kind of help uplift and inspire people too. Yeah, and then with the music videos, um, so you asked like, what is the concept behind each one? Yes. Okay, so the first one, we wanted to have some fun with it because the story of this album is, um, right, where these struggling artists have to work these odd jobs. So like Brian Bravo's dad has a painting company yeah. that he's worked for, for like, what many years on and yeah, on? Yeah, many years since he's since he's the owner of the company. He's worked there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So we had an idea, like, okay, let's just pretend in this video that we're both painters. He didn't have to pretend because yeah. he had no experience, <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, and we and we're gonna go to this house to do a job, and then when they leave, we're just, we're gonna have a party and like perform our song. Yeah. Um, that was kind of the concept with that. And then there's kind of a cliffhanger ending where it's like, oh, did that really happen? Kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe he something? did if his we'll dad. The next video. <laughs> you lived experience with that. Was the was the party part also lived experience? Well, that well, was actually a big party. That was lived experience too. Yeah. yeah, we partied a lot, but I don't think we've ever partied at somebody's house. We were working a job at. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, our next one that we're working deal. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our next one that we're, we that we already have recorded that's going to be um, released soon is um, basically called Mi Essay for that one. It's about a, a guy that comes to the home or trying to have a good time, kind of like opens up the fridge, he's always taking the juice, he's always trying to like um, get out with the girls but instead he scares them away <laughs> and uh, he's that type of like person at the party that's like everyone's like okay like back yeah. off. And that's been me before. Yeah. And I've also been that before too. Said, so. <laughs> and so and people, you know, we've known in our lives. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny concept. Um, yeah. It's about yeah, a guy who's like the ultimate moocher. Yeah, but it's like, moocher. but it's like deep down, I don't know. He has a good heart, or he yeah. he's a little talented. Or there's just there's something you like about him, so you kind of keep him around. But yeah. then it's just like okay, eventually everybody starts to catch on to the mooching, and it's like okay, like enough. Yeah, me yes, I took my juice. Yes, yeah, I took my juice. Yes, I took my juice. I, f I feel like everyone knows someone like that and you're like, oh, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> but exactly. um, okay, so another question I have for you is who is currently on your playlist on high rotation? Mm. Mm, that's a good question. Oh, I already know that. <laughs> yeah, Coda the Friend is one of my favorite artists. He's a hip hop artist that has a very jazzy sound. Uh, I like Joyner. I like Amy. I like some Amy Winehouse. I listen to yep. Amy Winehouse a lot. Turn yesterday. It's dope. Mac Miller. Uh, yep. How about you, man? Yeah, Mac Miller is one of them for me. Um, I go from Eminem right now. T Pain is also right there. I mean, Royce the Five Nine is on my playlist right now. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Dram, Justin Bieber too, recently too. Uh, what else have I been listening? Shakira. Shakira. I've been listening to a lot of Shakira recently, actually. Nice. Bob Marley is always there for me too because yeah. my dad is Jamaican and grew up with his music, so he's always, always part of the playlist. No, so if you could open up a tour for anyone, who would it be? Because you you listed a lot of artists. <laughs> that would, that I would mean, be some dope. of them are dead, so maybe not those Shakira. ones. But if if it could be anyone who's currently alive, who would be your your dream uh, person to open for? It's a hard I, question. <laughs> well, yeah, because of the style of music we're doing, like Shakira, I think we yep, go with Shakira. that. Shakira would be super yep. cool. Or Carlos Santana. Ooh, Carlos Santana. Carlos yeah. Santana. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, somebody just told you, or Linda reminded yeah. him of Carlos Santana. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, funny thing about Shakira is actually, that was the first concert I saw when I was uh, growing up. And she was the first person I saw like on stage and I was a little kid, I'm like, wow. This is so incredible. Do you have a favorite song by her? Um, I like Rabiosa. Yeah, I think I like that one. Loca is another good one. Um, 
You know what's the one that we're always listening to? Um, hips, hips on my list. Yeah, that's a huge one. <laughs> yeah, I like the one she did with White Cliff John. I don't even know what's called. I just remember the Shakira, Shakira. Oh no, that's the same song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so light. It's so light, right? Right, right. Oh gosh, yeah, that was. That was actually my first album as well. So <laughs> it was the first album I ever got, and I. Would you look at that? I played it a lot. Um, I loved the uh, everything about it. It was, it was beautiful. Um, so when writing the song, Linda, how did you pull from lived experience? Is Linda real? Is Linda a real person? Because I know your last um, music video that you're mentioning that you, you kind of pulled from experience of the ultimate moocher. So do you have a person like Linda? Yep. Yeah. So basically, um, one day, uh, Shia comes up to me and he's like, um, we're basically talking about a girl who kind of thinks that you're cute. But doesn't want to like believe that you're actually gonna go somewhere. With yeah, like, she's like, oh, you're so, oh, they're kind of cute, you know. Your songs are pushed, but you're not really gonna make it. You yeah, know you're, what I mean? You're, you're not gonna do it. You're, yeah, you're so cute with your little like microphones and your stuff, but you know, you're not, you're not gonna be big. You're not gonna achieve your dream, kind of thing. It's just kind of the. the so idea basically, with it. we got uh, my roommate uh, Melanie to jump on. She did all the Spanish uh, ad libs vocals, so she kind of starts off like, like, okay, yeah, let's hear what you got. Mm -hmm. What kind of music you got? And then by the end of it, she's like, oh, Mastermind. I love, I love you, guys. you guys. Yeah. So are there any other songs where you're pulling from lived experience of certain personalities? For person, yeah. I guess uh, me yesterday, we played ourselves sober. <laughs> but really, we were in party mode because we were kind of, um, like when we used to party and do our freestyling together. Yeah. I, I honestly feel like every song that we've written um, post from experience, yeah. we haven't released too many yet. We've got three released, but um, we've got some saved up. We're planning to uh, release some a little more frequently than usual because we were a bit backlog. Backlog. We want to give our fans some more music, but I think yeah, every because we have a song. That you mentioned about LCDO and how that was low for you. Exactly. Yeah, I mentioned yeah. about I used to be addicted to uh, to alcohol and alcoholic. I, I talk about that and. Um, the other song we're working on, Platinum, we talk about more some of our like anxiety and mental yep. health struggles and swap so We talk about swap. being smooth when we're not really that smooth. <laughs> <laughs> He's smooth. <laughs> uh, do you have a dream collaboration? Is there anyone who you feel like would really mix well with your music and sound sound amazing with? Um, anyone at all? Are you telling me Pharrell? Pharrell would be amazing in general, but if we're talking about the masterminds as we are now, wow. Uh, maybe some like Daddy Yankee, you know, or somebody like big like oh, like with a really like, commercial sound could be cool to go over. You know, I really I really been digging uh Bad Bunny's flows a lot. Yeah, he's dope. And I, I've he's been dope. actually really connecting with his music too as an artist and as a as a visual guy, I really like his music videos too. Mm -hmm. So with your music, I'm getting a lot of like Spanish vibes and hip hop vibes. Uh, yeah. If you could perform, if it wasn't COVID and you could perform this album at any venue, which venue do you think would suit would suit your, your album, your style of music right now? Does it have to be within uh, Canada? Any, any venue in the world. Okay. Well, if it was in Toronto, I would love to perform at Harborfront. Yeah. Because I grew up watching my dad play a huge show. I saw some great artists that really like there. It's a really nice vibe with the water in the background. And you, yeah, it's like you can't play on that main stage unless you're somebody. So that would be that would be dope. Or even Dundas Square if we're talking Toronto. But yeah, we're, just, we're talking like big somewhere in South America. But I don't know the names of any venues there. Yeah, know? we want to go to South America. We don't know exactly which venue, but I think we're just kind of thinking whatever comes first and yeah. whatever is, I guess, going to be fun. Work our way up. Yeah, work our way up from there. Do you feel like the COVID-19 quarantine has affected your music in any way? Maybe given you more time to work on specific things, maybe kind of hindered you from performing at certain venues? Well, we used to do a lot of performances before then. So, mm -hmm. and, and it's been a blessing in a way for, because it's given us the opportunity to kind of work on more of the studio crafting of things instead of the performance uh, crafting. Um, which will which will also come to, um, but we've been working heavily during this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we just did our first performance together. It was on live TV. There wasn't a, an audience, but it's our first time like performing in front of cameras or on a stage. As um, a duo, yeah. As a duo for yeah, masterminds. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, COVID helped me actually a lot to um, buy my sound and just grind and get better because there was just less stuff to do. So I, I just focused even more on the music and we, we worked a lot on songs. Um, yeah during that time too, but I, man, I'm just so ready for it to be over. I, I can't wait to get back to perform, because with with the Mindful MCs, we used to perform usually at least once a month, sometimes two, yep. three times a month. So I, we really, really miss like those interactions with the fans and everything. Yep. Do you have a favorite song on your album? And which is it and why? Hmm. Mm, that's a good one, actually. I feel like they're probably all so close to your heart and you're like, ah, oh, it's, it's a tricky one. It's, it keeps changing because we're getting better with each new one that we make. I think um, right now, we need the remix. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right now, yeah. So we have a remix that we, we put together for one of the tracks. And um, I think that one is very special to us because it's been an eye opener. And also just the yeah. sound of it has been incredible. Yeah. So and we that, got a dope feature. On yeah, that we got a sick feature too. on that too. Yeah. Um, little new elements Keith to Fantasma. it. Shout out. Yeah, Keith Fantasma, yeah. yeah. Um, he did some incredible Spanish speaking, building, and it was very playful too. Like it makes you dance, it makes you groove. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely yeah. that. What kind of, what do you hope to give to your audience when they listen to your music? Uh, do you hope to give them kind of like more happy vibes? Do you hope to kind of like cheer them up? Do you hope to make them dance? All those things. All those things? I like, yeah, and we I like, we try to keep it as real as possible as opposed to our own like heart and identity. That too. too. Yeah. yeah, each song we're working on being more real than the last one. Yeah. Which direction do you think you can see your music heading in in the future? Ooh, that's a good one. I see it becoming more commercial, at least for a phase while we're building our audience and getting more Band. So I see us doing some like reg reggaeton stuff and yeah. maybe it's a little bit more pop, but like still the Spanglish uh, sound type of stuff too. I noticed that something that we're always trying to keep within our roots is always trying to grow and trying to um, adapt and try new styles of music too and just um, just be playful and have fun with it too. So yeah, adapting and growing is yeah. um, a big part of that. Is there anything that you'd like to say to your fans um, as we head out? Masterminds on a roll, gonna blow. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Lots of music is coming. Yeah. Music videos are on the way. We've been grinding. Yeah. So get hype. Get hype. We've been putting a lot of fun yeah. and our heart into this. Oh, and this Friday at 8 p.m. we're dropping our music video for yeah. MSA. Yeah, get hype for that one. We put a lot into it. We think it's even better than our Linda music video. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to check it out. Thank you for joining me on Inbox with Julia Cosby. Yeah, awesome. thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for watching Inbox with Julia Cosby on Tag TV. Every time that I wanna get loose, I opened up the fridge, see my yes, I took my juice, okay? But every time we wanna celebrate, pop a bottle, but my yes, I took my champagne, okay?